My name is Yavor Bojinov, and I'm an assistant professor at the Harvard Business School in the Technology and Operations Management Unit. I'm also an affiliate to the Harvard Statistics Department. There were basically two big challenges that we were facing in the courses that I was teaching. The first one is we wanted our MBA students to do data analysis, but most of them had very limited coding experience. So typically, if you were teaching this in uh, C's or in the stats department, you would have the students use R or Python, but most of our MBA students just do not know that. So we wanted to find a tool or a way of getting them to do data analysis, sophisticated data analysis and model building without actually having to write code. This is an example of how we use ChatGPT Premium for data analysis. So here you can see I'm uploading the data set, which is synthetic data. So there was no uh, privacy issues. It's called warriors underscore data.csv. And all I said was perform exploratory data analysis. So it loads in the data and it actually figures out what each of the columns are. And then it guesses what that actually means. It starts to compute some summary statistics around the ticket price, the age. So just for context, this is data uh, that is basically synthetic customer data of when people purchase tickets and how much they spend on buying NBA tickets to the Warriors uh, games. And here it starts to plot and visualize some of the data. So it starts to plot a histogram of the age of the customers, uh, the price that people paid, uh, and then also how much they spend on concessions. And you can see that sort of zero, um, lots of people, 400 people in the data didn't spend anything, but then there's a nice distribution of everyone else that spend money on concessions. And then it even starts to give you some high level interpretations, right? Uh, around the distribution of the age, for example, the age distribution is fairly uniform with certain peaks around 30 and late 40. So it starts to actually also interpret this data for you. It looks at the different customer types in the data, whether or not people were on the fan mailing list, whether they bought tickets in the upper echelons of the stadium and the lower and so on. Um, and then what you can do, you can actually in the next prompt, because we wanted to build a model to predict when people purchase tickets, we can actually ask it to look at each of the variables and see which ones are most predictive. So basically run a basic correlational analysis and it gives us the correlation for each of the variables with the days before game variable. And then it also visualizes some of this. And then finally, I'm just gonna scroll down here. Uh, I can get it to build a linear regression model and it will do all of that. It will tell me the performance. Uh, it will tell me things like the R squared. And of course I can get it to give me the actual full output or I can even ask it uh, to actually, and I'm gonna scroll right to the bottom here to actually give me all of the code that it wrote. I can take this code and then I can just basically copy paste it somewhere and run this locally if I wanted to. The second challenge we faced was helping students really speed up the pace of innovation, product design, and content creation. And this was really in service of getting them to come up with ideas, vet those ideas quicker, and then actually come up with visualizations um, and content that they could leverage to literally design new products and design new content, new services, etc. What we did was we basically leveraged a range of freely available generative AI tools to really help that product design and content creation process. So for example, we use Stable Diffusion in Poe for generating mood boards and images. Uh, we use DALI in ChatGPT, again, for image generation. Uh, and we used uh, Tome for slide generation, Julius AI for free data analysis. So here we were doing a task, which was to come up with a new basketball team. Uh, and I basically gave it the name um, and I said I wanted it to be in Austin and in a separate analysis, we came up with the name, we came up uh, with a story about where this team came from. And I even had uh, ChatGPT come up with prompts to give to Dali. So up here, you're seeing an example of what that prompt looks like. And this is generating a couple of team logos. We then also use this to generate color schemes. And then we combine the color scheme with the logo to sort of bring that logo to life. And then finally, we even had to generate some examples of what mascots uh, for this team could look like. And this was all in the service of basically helping augment that design process around new products, new services, new businesses.
So we'll learn a lot from this experience. I think the biggest takeaway is that although these tools are really powerful, there is a learning curve and most students do not instantly get this. So what we found to be helpful is to provide very clear and succinct guidance and training on how to use these tools and also how to write effective prompts. And that for us was really transformative in getting them to move from just asking simple questions to really being able to leverage the full power of these tools.